Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy my video, please click the like button and share the video. It is the only way the YouTube algorithms really notices me. I will be very grateful to you. Whispers in the Holy Water, a terrifying exorcism. Scary story published by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1, The Troubled Call. As a young priest, I, Father James, often found solace in the routines of parish life. The daily rituals of prayer, communion, and pastoral care provided a comforting rhythm amidst the ever-changing tides of human existence. But nothing could have prepared me for the distressed call that shattered the tranquility of my world. It was a crisp autumn evening when the urgency in their voices pierced through the quietude of the church walls. The Smith family, pillars of our community, stood before me with faces etched in worry, their eyes pleading for salvation. Mrs. Smith's trembling hands clutched a crumpled tissue, a silent testament to the turmoil that raged within. Father James, she began, her voice quivering with emotion. It's David. He's, he's not himself. My heart quickened at the mention of David's name. I had known the Smith family for years, watched David grow from a spirited child into a fine young man. But beneath the facade of normalcy, something sinister lurked, a darkness that threatened to consume him whole. The urgency in their voices echoed the severity of the situation, sparking a sense of unease within me. For the Smiths to seek my counsel, their faith shaken to its core, spoke volumes about the gravity of David's plight. As their trusted shepherd, I could not turn a blind eye to their cries for help. Tell me everything, I urged, my voice a steady anchor amidst the storm of their emotions. And so, they poured out their fears, their words a torrent of anguish and desperation. David, once a beacon of light in their lives, had become a shadow of his former self. His laughter, once ringing with joy, had grown hollow and devoid of warmth. His once bright eyes now gazed into the abyss, haunted by unseen terrors that threatened to consume him from within. As I listened to their tale of woe, a knot formed in the pit of my stomach. The signs were unmistakable, the telltale symptoms of possession too glaring to ignore. But even as my rational mind grappled with the implications, a seed of doubt took root within me. Could such darkness truly exist in our midst, lurking in the hearts of those we held dear? But the Smith's anguish was real, their cries for help, a poignant reminder of the fragility of faith in the face of adversity. And so, with a heavy heart and a fervent prayer on my lips, I made a solemn vow to confront the darkness that threatened to consume David's soul. The troubled call from the Smith family had set in motion a chain of events that would forever alter the course of my life. Little did I know that it was, but the beginning of a harrowing journey into the depths of human suffering and the boundless power of faith. But for now, as the church bells tolled in the distance, I braced myself for the challenges that lay ahead, my resolve unyielding in the face of uncertainty. Chapter 2 Signs of Disturbance Upon arriving at the Smith residence, the palpable tension in the air hung heavy, suffocating even the faintest whispers of hope. The once serene atmosphere that enveloped the cozy suburban home now crackled with an ominous energy, a harbinger of the darkness that lurked within. As I stepped across the threshold, my senses were assaulted by the weight of despair that permeated the very walls. Mrs. Smith stood before me, her frail form trembling with a mixture of dread and desperation. Her eyes, once bright with hope, now mirrored the depths of her son's torment. Father James, she whispered, her voice barely above a hoarse murmur. Thank you for coming. Her words hung in the air like a silent plea, a desperate cry for salvation in the face of overwhelming adversity. And as I met her gaze, I saw the raw anguish etched upon her face, 
a testament to the relentless onslaught of despair that had besieged her family. Of course, Mrs. Smith, I replied, my voice a fragile thread of reassurance amidst the storm of her emotions. I'm here to help in any way I can. With a heavy heart, I followed Mrs. Smith through the dimly lit corridors of the house, each step a testament to the gravity of the situation unfolding before me. The air was thick with an oppressive stillness, broken only by the occasional creak of floorboards beneath my feet. And then, as we entered the sanctity of David's room, the full extent of the darkness that had taken root within him became painfully clear. His once tidy sanctuary now lay in disarray, a chaotic jumble of scattered belongings and shattered illusions. The faint echo of his tortured cries reverberated off the walls, a haunting reminder of the torment that consumed him from within. Father James, Mrs. Smith began, her voice trembling with emotion. This is where it all began. As she spoke, she recounted the inexplicable occurrences that had plagued her son in recent weeks. Strange noises in the dead of night, inexplicable shadows lurking in the corners of his room, and the chilling sensation of being watched by unseen eyes. And amidst it all, David's unsettling behavior grew increasingly erratic, his once gentle demeanor giving way to fits of rage and despair. As I listened to her tale of woe, a chill ran down my spine, a harbinger of the darkness that lay in wait. For even as I bore witness to the devastation wrought upon David's soul, I could not deny the chilling realization that something sinister lurked within these walls. But even amidst the darkness, a flicker of hope remained, a beacon of light amidst the encroaching shadows. And as I gazed into the depths of Mrs. Smith's tear-filled eyes, I made a solemn vow to confront the darkness that threatened to consume her son's soul no matter the cost. For in the face of overwhelming adversity, faith remained our greatest ally, a steadfast anchor amidst the storm of uncertainty. And with that unwavering conviction burning bright within me, I braced myself for the battles that lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 3. Skepticism Shattered Despite my initial skepticism, the events unfolding before my eyes left no room for doubt. The undeniable evidence of David's possession shattered any remnants of skepticism lingering in my mind, casting aside the comforting veil of disbelief that had shielded me from the harsh realities of the supernatural. It was during one fateful evening, as the moon hung heavy in the sky and the world lay cloaked in darkness, that the true extent of David's affliction became painfully clear. I stood at the threshold of his room, my heart heavy with trepidation, as I prepared to confront the darkness that lurked within. As I entered the room, a chill ran down my spine, a tangible reminder of the malevolent presence that hung heavy in the air. David sat upon his bed, his eyes vacant and hollow, a mere shell of the vibrant young man he once was. And as he turned to face me, I recoiled in horror at the sight before me. His voice, once filled with warmth and laughter, now resonated with a sinister edge, distorted and filled with malice. Words spilled from his lips like venom, each syllable dripping with the unmistakable taint of darkness. With each utterance, I felt a shiver run down my spine, a primal instinct warning me of the danger that lay before me. And then, as if to further cement the reality of his possession, David's body contorted unnaturally, twisting and writhing in a grotesque display of otherworldly power. His eyes, once bright with life, now burned with an unholy fire, their gaze piercing through the very depths of my soul. In that moment, my resolve wavered, and I questioned whether my faith alone would be enough to combat the darkness consuming David's soul. For even as I clung to the comforting embrace of my beliefs, I could not deny the overwhelming power of the forces arrayed against us. But amidst the uncertainty, a glimmer of hope remained, a flicker of light 
amidst the encroaching darkness. For though the road ahead was fraught with peril, I knew that I did not walk alone. With the strength of my faith as my shield and the prayers of the faithful as my sword, I would confront the darkness that threatened to consume us all. And so, with a silent prayer on my lips and the weight of the world upon my shoulders, I steeled myself for the battles that lay ahead. For in the face of overwhelming adversity, faith remained our greatest weapon, a steadfast beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. And with that unwavering conviction burning bright within me, I braced myself for the trials that awaited, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 4. Preparing for Battle As I grappled with the weight of responsibility that now rested squarely upon my shoulders, I sought solace in the comforting embrace of faith. Alone in the dimly lit confines of the church, I knelt before the altar, my heart heavy with the burden of the task that lay ahead. With each whispered prayer, I sought guidance and strength from the divine, knowing that the battles yet to come would test the very limits of my resolve. But even amidst the solitude of the church, I was not alone in my struggles. For as I rose from my knees and turned to face the world beyond the sanctuary walls, I found myself surrounded by a fellowship of like-minded souls united in purpose and bound by the unbreakable bonds of faith. Together, we would stand against the darkness that threatened to consume us, drawing strength from one another as we prepared for the battles yet to come. With determination burning bright within our hearts, we set about the meticulous task of preparing for the daunting battle that lay ahead. Each of us brought our own unique strengths and skills, to the table, combining our efforts in a united front against the forces of evil that sought to tear us apart. For in the face of overwhelming adversity, unity would be our greatest weapon, a steadfast bulwark against the encroaching shadows. Together, we pored over ancient texts and scriptures, seeking wisdom and insight into the nature of the darkness that now threatened our very existence. With each passing hour, our resolve grew stronger, our determination unwavering in the face of the trials that lay ahead. For we knew that the battle against the forces of evil would require every ounce of determination we possessed, every shred of faith that burned within our souls. And as the hours stretched into days, our preparations reached a fever pitch, each of us honing our skills and sharpening our resolve for the trials yet to come. With weapons at the ready and hearts ablaze with righteous fury, we stood as one against the darkness, prepared to face whatever horrors awaited us on the battlefield of the soul. For in the end, it was not the strength of our arms or the power of our weapons that would carry us through the darkest of nights. It was the unwavering faith that burned within our hearts, a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows that would ultimately lead us to victory. And with that knowledge burning bright within us, we stepped forward into the unknown, ready to confront the darkness that threatened to consume us all. Chapter 5 the confrontation begins. With prayers whispered on our lips and hearts heavy with trepidation, we stood at the threshold of David's room, ready to confront the darkness that had taken root within him. The air crackled with tension, thick with the weight of uncertainty and the palpable presence of malevolence that hung heavy in the air. As we entered the room, the faint scent of incense mingled with the acrid stench of sulfur a stark reminder of the unholy forces that now held sway over David's soul. With each step we took, the floorboards groaned beneath our feet, a haunting echo of the trials that lay ahead. And there, in the center of the room, sat David, his once gentle features contorted in agony as the darkness within him writhed and thrashed against its invisible confines. His eyes, 
once bright with life, now burned with an unholy fire. Their gaze fixed upon us with a predatory intensity that sent shivers down our spines. With a silent prayer on our lips, we began the solemn ritual of exorcism. Each word uttered a beacon of light amidst the encroaching darkness. The air hummed with energy as the incantations flowed forth, each syllable a potent weapon against the forces of evil that sought to tear David's soul asunder. But even as we spoke the holy words, the demon within David roared with defiance, its laughter echoing off the walls like a sinister symphony of torment. With each peal of laughter, I felt a chill run down my spine, a stark reminder of the perilous journey that lay ahead. And yet, amidst the chaos and the uncertainty, a flicker of hope remained, a beacon of light amidst the encroaching darkness. For though the road ahead was fraught with peril, we stood united in purpose and bound by the unbreakable bonds of faith. With prayers on our lips and hearts ablaze with righteous fury, we braced ourselves for the battles yet to come, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 6 A Clash of Wills As the exorcism intensified, I found myself drawn into a fierce battle of wills with the malevolent entity that had taken root within David's soul. Each incantation uttered, each prayer spoken, was a declaration of defiance against the darkness that threatened to consume us all. With each word, I felt the power of faith course through my veins, a beacon of light amidst the encroaching shadows. But even as we fought with all our might, the demon's resistance grew stronger, its malevolent presence casting a pall over the room like a shroud of darkness. With each passing moment, I felt the weight of its influence pressing down upon me, threatening to overwhelm my senses and shatter my resolve. Yet. I refused to yield. With every fiber of my being, I clung to the faith that burned within my heart, a steadfast anchor amidst the tempest of uncertainty. Each prayer, each incantation, was a testament to the strength of my conviction, a rallying cry in the face of overwhelming adversity. And as the battle raged on, I felt the presence of my fellow priests and spiritual practitioners beside me, their unwavering faith lending strength to my own. Together, we stood as one against the forces of darkness, united in purpose and bound by the unbreakable bonds of brotherhood. But even amidst the unity of our purpose, the demon's resistance remained formidable. With each passing moment, its influence grew stronger its malevolent laughter ringing in our ears like a taunting challenge. And yet, we refused to falter. With each breath, we drew upon the power of our faith, a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a flicker of light pierced through the darkness, a radiant beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. With a final burst of energy, we redoubled our efforts, our prayers echoing off the walls with a newfound fervor. And in that moment, as the air crackled with tension and the room seemed to tremble with the weight of our collective will, the demon's resistance faltered. With a final, desperate cry, it was banished from David's soul, its malevolent presence vanquished by the power of our faith. As the echoes of the battle faded into silence, I felt a profound sense of relief wash over me, a weight lifted from my shoulders. But even amidst the triumph of our victory, I knew that the battle against the forces of darkness was far from over. With renewed determination, we prepared to face whatever trials lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 7 Unraveling the Mystery Amidst the chaos of the exorcism, as incantations filled the air and the room crackled with energy, 
fragments of David's past began to surface like specters from the depths of his tortured psyche. Memories long buried beneath layers of darkness clawed their way to the surface, revealing the traumatic events that had paved the way for the demon's intrusion. As I stood amidst the swirling maelstrom of spiritual warfare, I found myself drawn into the tangled web of David's past, each revelation a shard of shattered glass that pierced through the veil of ignorance. With each fragment of memory, I felt the weight of David's suffering pressing down upon me, a burden too heavy for anyone's soul to bear alone. And yet, amidst the chaos and confusion, a pattern began to emerge, a thread of commonality that wove its way through the fabric of David's life. It became clear to me that the demon's intrusion was not a random act of malevolence, but rather the culmination of a lifetime of pain and suffering. With each revelation, I pieced together the puzzle of David's possession, determined to unearth the truth buried beneath layers of darkness. I delved into the depths of his memories, each recollection a window into the horrors he had endured, the scars of which still lingered deep within his soul. I learned of the traumatic events that had scarred David's childhood, the loss of loved ones, and the betrayal of trust. I witnessed the torment he had endured at the hands of those who should have protected him, the echoes of which reverberated through the corridors of his mind like a haunting melody. But amidst the darkness, there were moments of light, glimmers of hope that shone through the cracks in David's shattered psyche. I saw the love and compassion that had sustained him through the darkest of nights, the unwavering faith that had carried him through the storms of life. And as I unraveled the mysteries of David's past, I came to understand the true nature of his possession. It was not merely a battle against a demonic entity, but a struggle for the very essence of his being, a fight to reclaim the light that had been snuffed out by the shadows of despair. With each revelation, I felt a renewed sense of purpose burning within me, a determination to banish the darkness that threatened to consume David's soul. And as I stood amidst the chaos of the exorcism, surrounded by the echoes of his tormented past, I vowed to fight on, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 8 Sacrifices Made As the exorcism reached its crescendo, I found myself standing at the precipice of a harrowing decision. The air crackled with energy thick with the tension of impending confrontation, as I prepared to confront the demon head-on in a desperate bid to save David's soul. With each passing moment, the weight of responsibility bore down upon me like a heavy burden, threatening to crush me beneath its weight. I knew that the battle that lay ahead would test not only my faith and resolve, but my very existence itself. And yet, amidst the chaos and uncertainty, a flicker of hope remained, a beacon of light amidst the encroaching darkness. With each breath, I drew upon the strength of my faith, a steadfast anchor amidst the tempest of uncertainty. With a silent prayer on my lips, I stepped forward into the fray, my heart heavy with trepidation and determination burning bright within me. The demon's malevolent presence loomed large before me, its form twisted and grotesque, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within. But even as I faced the embodiment of darkness, head on, I refused to yield. With every fiber of my being, I fought with all my might, each blow fueled by a desperate desire to banish the demon and free David from its clutches. The battle that ensued was a testament to the strength of my resolve a fierce struggle that tested the very limits of my endurance. With each blow exchanged, I felt the weight of the demon's influence pressing down upon me, threatening to overwhelm my senses and shatter my faith. But even amidst the chaos and uncertainty, a glimmer of hope remained, a flicker of light amidst the encroaching shadows. With each passing moment, I drew upon the strength of my faith a steadfast anchor 
amidst the tempest of uncertainty. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a ray of light pierced through the darkness, illuminating the path to victory. With a final, desperate cry, I summoned every last ounce of strength within me, unleashing a torrent of holy energy that banished the demon from David's soul once and for all. As the echoes of the battle faded into silence, I felt a profound sense of relief wash over me, a weight lifted from my shoulders. But even amidst the triumph of our victory, I knew that the battle against the forces of darkness was far from over. With renewed determination, I prepared to face whatever trials lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. For in the face of overwhelming adversity, faith remained our greatest weapon, a steadfast beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. Chapter 9 Lingering Shadows In the aftermath of the exorcism, I emerged from the crucible of spiritual warfare battered and bruised, my soul scarred by the memories of the horrors I had witnessed. The echoes of the battle still rang in my ears, a haunting cacophony of screams and whispers that reverberated through the depths of my mind. As I stood amidst the wreckage of David's room, I felt a profound sense of exhaustion wash over me, a weariness that seeped into my bones and weighed heavy upon my soul. The physical toll of the battle was evident in the bruises that marred my skin, a testament to the ferocity of the struggle that had unfolded within those walls. But it was not just the physical wounds that haunted me. It was the memories of the darkness that had taken root within David's soul, the malevolent presence that had threatened to consume him whole. Despite the temporary reprieve afforded by the exorcism, I knew that the shadows of darkness still lingered, casting a pall over David's fragile existence. As I gazed upon his sleeping form, my heart ached with a profound sense of sorrow and regret. I knew that the road ahead would be long and fraught with peril, a journey into the depths of human suffering from which there could be no easy escape. And yet, amidst the darkness, there was still a glimmer of hope a flicker of light amidst the encroaching shadows. For though David's soul had been battered and bruised by the forces of evil, it had not been broken. With each passing moment, I could see the spark of life returning to his eyes, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. But even as I took solace in this small victory, I knew that the battle against the forces of darkness was far from over. The demon may have been banished from David's soul, but its influence still lingered like a malignant shadow, waiting to strike when least expected. As I made my way out of the Smith residence, I felt a sense of unease gnawing at the edges of my consciousness. The darkness that had taken root within David's soul was but a symptom of a larger, more insidious evil that lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare its next victim. But amidst the uncertainty, there was still hope. For though the road ahead would be long and fraught with peril, I knew that I would not walk it alone. With faith as my guide and determination as my shield, I would continue to fight against the forces of darkness, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 10 Confronting the darkness within. With determination burning bright within me, like a beacon in the night, I resolved to confront the lingering presence of the demon that still haunted the shadows of David's soul. I refused to let fear dictate my actions, knowing that to cower in the face of darkness was to surrender to its power. Armed with unwavering faith and an unyielding spirit, I prepared for a final showdown with the forces of evil that threatened to consume us all. As I stood before the threshold of David's room once more, I could feel the weight of anticipation pressing down upon me like a leaden cloak. The air crackled with energy, thick with the remnants of the battles that had been fought within those walls. 
But amidst the lingering echoes of despair, there was a flicker of hope, a glimmer of light amidst the encroaching darkness. With each step I took, I felt the resolve burning bright within me, a steady flame that refused to be extinguished. I knew that the road ahead would be fraught with peril, that the forces of evil would stop at nothing to thwart our efforts. But I also knew that I could not falter, that the fate of David's soul hung in the balance, and that I was the only one capable of setting him free. As I entered the room, I was met with the familiar sight of David lying upon his bed, his form shrouded in the darkness that clung to him like a second skin. But even amidst the shadows, I could see the glimmer of recognition in his eyes, a spark of humanity that refused to be snuffed out. David, I whispered, my voice a gentle plea amidst the silence of the room. You must fight against the darkness that threatens to consume you. You are stronger than you know, and with faith as your guide, you can overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. But even as I spoke the words, I could feel the malevolent presence of the demon stirring within him, its influence reaching out like tendrils of darkness to ensnare his soul. With each passing moment, the struggle within him grew more desperate, the battle between light and darkness playing out upon the canvas of his tortured psyche. And then, as if in response to the growing tension in the room, the darkness coalesced into a tangible form before me, its malevolent presence looming large like a specter of death. With a cold, chilling laugh, it mocked my feeble attempts to banish it, taunting me with the knowledge of my own mortality. But even as the darkness threatened to overwhelm me, I refused to yield. With each breath, I drew upon the strength of my faith, a steadfast anchor amidst the tempest of uncertainty. I knew that the battle ahead would test the very limits of my endurance, that victory would come at a steep price. But I also knew that I could not falter, that the fate of David's soul hung in the balance, and that I was the only one capable of setting him free. With a silent prayer on my lips, and the weight of the world upon my shoulders, I steeled myself for the final showdown with the forces of evil that threatened to consume us all. For in the face of overwhelming adversity, faith remained our greatest weapon, a steadfast beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. And with that unwavering conviction burning bright within me, I braced myself for the battles that lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. Chapter 11, The Final Battle. In a climactic showdown that echoed through the very fabric of reality, I stood face to face with the demon that had ensnared David's soul. Every fiber of my being pulsed with determination, refusing to back down in the face of overwhelming darkness. With prayers as my shield and divine intervention as my sword, I prepared to clash with the demon in a battle for David's soul, knowing that the outcome would shape the course of eternity. As the tension in the room reached its zenith, I could feel the weight of the moment pressing down upon me like a crushing weight. The air crackled with energy, thick with the palpable presence of malevolence that hung heavy in the air. But amidst the encroaching darkness, there was a flicker of light, a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. With a silent prayer on my lips, I stepped forward to confront the demon, my heart ablaze with righteous fury. I could feel the eyes of the creature upon me, its gaze burning with a malevolent intensity that threatened to consume me whole. But even amidst the shadows, I stood firm, my faith unwavering in the face of adversity. With a roar that shook the very foundations of the earth, the demon lunged forward, its form twisted and grotesque, a twisted parody of humanity. But I did not flinch. With every ounce of strength within me, I raised my voice in defiance, calling upon the power of the divine to smite the darkness that threatened to engulf us all. The battle that ensued was a symphony of chaos and destruction, a clash of titans that echoed through the corridors of time. With each blow exchanged, 
I could feel the weight of the demon's influence pressing down upon me, threatening to overwhelm my senses and shatter my resolve. But I refused to yield. With every breath, I drew upon the strength of my faith, a steadfast anchor amidst the tempest of uncertainty. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a ray of light pierced through the darkness, illuminating the path to victory. With a final burst of energy, I unleashed a torrent of holy energy that banished the demon from David's soul once and for all. The creature let out a deafening scream, its form writhing and twisting as it was consumed by the very light it sought to extinguish. As the echoes of the battle faded into silence, I felt a profound sense of relief wash over me, a weight lifted from my shoulders. But even amidst the triumph of our victory, I knew that the battle against the forces of darkness was far from over. With renewed determination, I prepared to face whatever trials lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. But for now, in this moment of respite, I allowed myself to breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that the light had triumphed over the darkness once more. Chapter 12 Redemption and Liberation as the dust settled and the echoes of the final battle faded into the ether, I emerged from the crucible of spiritual warfare victorious, my faith unshaken and my spirit unbroken. The weight of the world lifted from my shoulders, replaced by a profound sense of relief and gratitude. With the demon banished and David's soul liberated, I knew that the journey had been fraught with peril but the ultimate triumph of good over evil had been achieved. In the aftermath of the battle, I stood amidst the wreckage of David's room, the air heavy with the scent of incense and the lingering echoes of the struggle that had unfolded within those walls. But amidst the chaos and destruction, there was a sense of peace, a stillness that permeated the air like a gentle breeze. With a heavy heart, I turned to face David, his form bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight streaming through the window. His eyes, once haunted by the shadows of darkness, now shone with a newfound clarity and purpose. In that moment, I knew that his soul had been liberated from the shackles of torment that had bound it for so long. David, I whispered, my voice filled with a mixture of relief and reverence. You are free now. The darkness that once consumed you has been banished, and your soul shines bright with the light of redemption. And as I spoke the words, I could see the weight of the world lifting from his shoulders, replaced by a sense of peace and serenity that washed over him like a gentle wave. With each passing moment, I watched as the shadows of darkness receded into the depths of oblivion replaced by the radiant glow of hope and renewal. But amidst the joy of David's liberation, there was a sense of solemnity, a recognition of the sacrifices that had been made along the way. As I looked upon the scars that marred my skin and the weariness that etched itself into the lines of my face, I knew that the road ahead would not be easy. But I also knew that it was a road worth traveling, a journey into the depths of human suffering that had ultimately led to redemption and liberation. With a silent prayer on my lips and the weight of the world upon my shoulders, I prepared to face the trials that lay ahead, knowing that the journey into the depths of human suffering had only just begun. But for now, in this moment of respite, I allowed myself to bask in the warmth of victory knowing that the light had triumphed over the darkness once and for all.